fame, some from the Refield Foundation, the International Coordinators of Green Fins. Today I'm going to quickly run through how to sign up and become a Green Fins digital member, but these instructions will also be loosely applicable to Green Fins certified membership, so in both cases this video is for you. From the Green Fins website, if you click on join, we have a quick table that gives a little bit more of an overview about which type of membership is most appropriate. But if you continue to either of these pages, ultimately it takes you to the same place, which is the hub registration form. The first key concept to understand is that first, every individual human must register a personal account in their own name. And the reason for this is um, that the hub has a, an action plan system, which operates a bit like a dive log. And there is also a community forum. And, and both of these features work best when uh, the, the person is you know, named themselves and puts in their own email address. And the idea is that this account can be linked then to the operations where they work. And it means that as dive professionals move around the industry, they can link and unlink themselves from their workplaces without losing any of their reputation or uh, activity in the community forum. So you'll see here, um, the first step is that personal account. Um, and there are some important warnings and considerations to read before um, signing up. So first I'm going to put in my name. That's an email address. Job title. And a contact number. Now for this demo, I'm not going to put in my real number, uh, but I suggest that you do. We'll only ever use this um, if there's some emergency reason that we would need to contact you. You'll then be sent an email verification. That looks like this. After opening the verification email, it will then ask you to uh, put in a little bit more details. The first one is a profile photo. Um, this is optional, but again, this will appear in the community forum and helps put a bit of a personal touch to the conversation. So um, just for the demo, I'm not going to do it, but um, I do recommend that people do this. Put it in a username and a password. So now that the account's created, you can log in either with the username or the email address. And whilst it's loading, it's just worth saying that we are constantly updating this system. So while the screens are accurate as of today, uh, we are, like I said, continually improving the hub. So it, it, if you do see slight variations on what you see today, that's quite normal and expected. And ho hopefully it's still um, a valid experience. So um, firstly, uh, there's a welcome message from JJ that sort of sets the tone for the system. And the first question is, what kind of um, role are you? Are you an owner manager or a staff freelancer? The reason for this question is that only managers can set up an operation. So um, if you're a staff or freelancer, then that's great, but you'll have to then ask for an invite um, by the manager to the operation where you work. Um, if you've not set up an operation before, then you need to proceed as the owner or manager. Now, the first um, step now that we've created our personal account is to actually register the operation. If the uh, operation already exists, so say the user is taking over management of an existing operation or they're taking over a business, then um, you can stop here and secure that invite. And if for any reason um, there's a, a, an issue, which means that um, you've lost contact with the previous hub manager, don't panic. Just email um, either info at greenfins.net or email your country team um, if, if you're in an active country. And uh, in either case, we'll be able to help get you back in and recover that account. Um, if it is genuinely a new uh, new operation, a new dive center, liverboard, or, or um, 
uh, snorkel company in a single location, then we need to register them as an operation. And the key distinction here is um, it, it, you, you probably will need to consider setting up separate operations if the business has dive centers with the same name, but in different locations. So we click add operation. There's another uh, nice message from JJ to provide more context. Now, the first question that the hub will ask is what um, kind of industry are you from? And the reason for this, particularly for digital membership, is that the questions um, that it will ask are really tailored to the industry. So it's very important to get this right. Um, specifically, if you, uh, just because people have come a cropper with this in the past, if you are a diving business that also happens to offer snorkeling, then choose diving. Um, you'd only choose snorkeling if the business only offers snorkeling and no, no other scuba diving services. Okay, now we need to provide some information about the operation. We then specify where the operation is based. For now I'm going to say based in the Philippines. And you can see here that it will um, offer a list of locations that have been pre-populated into the hub. Um, it is possible that we haven't captured all of the locations where operations could be based. So note at the bottom, there is a, an option that says my location isn't listed. So do have a good look in this list, but if um, the location genuinely isn't there, you can suggest it. And then uh, we'll, and when I say we, I mean ReefWorld will review the location and uh, and approve it or adjust it if necessary. For now I'm gonna say down in Zambonquita. Next, we put in the address. So um, again, I, what you put in here is what will appear on the public website and can be changed at any time from the edit operations screen. So you, you want this to be an accurate reflection of where tourists will be able to find you, um, but it doesn't have any bearing on this map. So again, you can, you can really put in um, either an address or directions, um, whatever you think will be most valuable or make it most easy for the tourist to find you. So uh, I'm actually just gonna put address line one, two, three, as this is a demo. Um, now you can specify where the pin is. Um, so by default, the starting point is set based on the capital of the country. So now we have to um, zoom in and actually find out where we are. So for now, I'm just gonna put us in the center of Darwin. Um, but again, and again, you can, you can move this around and get the positioning um, relatively fine um, and again any changes here will be reflected on the Greenfins website uh, within a couple of hours so don't worry too much um, if you're doing this on a mobile phone and you know that the positioning is fiddly you can always come back in and change it later. Same for liverboards you can choose um, either to position the pin where the liverboard currently is or where it will be for its next itinerary um, and just keep updating it as the as the vessel is moving around. Um, there's no limitation on how many times you can change the location um, we just say just exercise discretion and, and what would make most sense for a tourist trying to find you. Now put in the operation email address. Again, this is uh, listed on the public website. So you want this to be uh, an address that guests could contact you on to make a booking. So I'm gonna say booking at, uh, I don't know, yeah, jamesscuba.com, not a real address. And same here, James Scuba. Um, the social media handles are all optional, but again, if you include them, then they get featured. Um, so, um, and they can be added later on on the site if you're doing it on a mobile phone. Lastly, we ask um, if the operation has any boats. Um, again, this is relevant because there are questions in the um, digital membership self-evaluation that will only be asked to operations that have boats. So um, selecting no here will reduce the number of questions that you're asked um, and selecting yes uh, means that we then ask for more information so that we can um, associate assessments to those vessels. So, so we click add boat, the boat's listed there, and then we click next. 
Ah, okay, some validation. Okay, apparently I didn't type in the website URL properly. Let's add the www. So now uh, the hub would like to know which training agencies you're associated with. Uh, you can select more than one. As we know, it's quite common for people to do recreational diving with uh, one agency and, and technical with another. Um, if you select uh, one of these, it will then pop up and ask you to enter the store number or the center ID. And this is really important to help um, behind the scenes us link up the account with the agency so that they can be recognized for eco recognition programs. Again, if you don't know the information during registration, that's fine. Um, you can add it again from the edit operation screen. So I'm just going to put in a number. It's also um, for Paddy members specifically, you don't need to include the, a, any characters beforehand. So no S or other letters, you just put in the, the raw number. Um, again, in the unlikely event that we've missed an agency, then um, you can suggest it and we'll review and, and add it if, uh, if we agree that it is a real agency. Um, but I think we've got most of the bases covered now. Next, the hub would like to know what kind of services you offer. Again, this helps tailor the questions in the self-valuation. So, uh, next, we ask how many staff do you employ directly. Um, the reason that we ask this is to it's a, it's a key measure of performance. So we want to see this number increasing um, as people engage more with green fins. Okay, next, the hub is now going to ask us, and this is why it didn't matter at the beginning whether you went down the certified registration button or the uh, digital one, because the hub um, asked the question again of you. So now it's going to say, would you like to proceed with digital membership or certified membership? And because I selected Philippines, Philippines is an active country, which means that um, certified membership is available from a national team. And in most cases in the Philippines, you would want to click uh, certified membership. Uh, and what that does is it will trigger a review process where the national team will look at the inquiry and they'll contact you by email to arrange uh, an in-person assessment. And once they record that assessment in the hub, your membership will become active and it will populate your action plan and give you access to the community. Uh, for this demo, we're going to continue with digital membership um, because it's the more complicated of the two to explain. Um, so I, I, I'm going to click digital membership here. Now, if, if we were in a country where certified membership wasn't available, this option would be grayed out and you couldn't proceed. There's a little bit of a preamble again, a reminder to go back to the website and look at the membership benefits um, if, if, um, if required. The hub will now ask you to sign the Greenfin's Code of Conduct. This used to be a paper form. Uh, and instead is now managed digitally. So what we ask you to do is just uh, read the 15 code of conduct points that you're being asked to abide by, tick the box to say that, that they've been read and that the staff of the operation will do everything they can to abide by this code of conduct. And then you'll sign it as the manager. Again, this is why it has to be the manager or the owner who is the one registering for the hub because they're the ones making the commitment to, to follow the code of conduct um, as part of normal operations. So I'm going to just put in a little signature. Again, if you make a mistake, you can clear it and start again. And this can be done either with the mouse or it can be done using your trackpad. Now the hub will ask for payment. In the first year, digital membership is $140. And then at renewal time, it is $60 thereafter. And this pricing is always under review, but we think that this is a fair reflection of the value that the digital membership offers. And 100% of the funds that are raised uh, from membership will then be reinvested into Greenfins in order to expand the program to new countries and to develop capacity within the existing active countries. Um, it also covers the running costs of the hub, which includes the staff that work on supporting it. And just as a reminder, the Refold Foundation is a non-profit, a UK registered non-profit. So, um, you can feel really confident that this money is going to be for the benefit of the program. Now I'm going to pause here. I don't, we're in production, so I don't have a, a test uh, card use I can use. I'm going to 
pause the demo and come back again once uh, payment has been proceeded with. Hello, welcome back. So I've completed the payment step and I'm now back in the hub on the operation dashboard. And you can see here that there are a number of operation tasks that are still outstanding. And it is um, likely that if you just completed the payment step that you will continue straight into the self-valuation. But if for any reason you did fall out of the process, uh, this is quite good to see because you will end up back here. And what you're looking for is this orange to-do card and starting the self-valuation. If payment can be successfully, you will end up um, on this screen. And it, what it explains is um, so it's basically some housekeeping that it really needs to be the manager or somebody with operational decision making that's locally based in the center that's that's completing the self-valuation. Um, it gives you an opportunity to say, if this isn't you, then um, add somebody who, who is and, and reassign the hub manager role to them so that they can be the one completing the self-valuation. And then we also say, um, we, we really recommend that the person doing the self-valuation has been for a dive with staff and customers within a month of, com of completing it, just so that they're fully up to date on how the operation is working and, and what the staff are really up to. Again, this is mimicking or, um, as much as possible how a certified assessment would take place on the ground. Uh, we also say here that it can take up to 90 minutes to complete. Uh, um, actually, in practice, it takes a little bit less. Um, and you can pause and come back at any time. And that's true of every one of the steps during onboarding. We recognize that dive pros are busy um, and that you might need to just pause and come back um, if you need to take care of something else. Clicking next, again, you get a, um, a little bit of positivity from Sam about the, the, the self-valuation process. And then now the hub will show you a series of areas, which are typically typical parts of a, of a, of a dive center. Um, and, and it's worth saying that this is industry specific. So because we selected diving at the beginning, we're going to get a diving set of questions. And because we did specify um, that the operation has a boat, we're also going to get a series of boat questions. So now if we go in and just start there, so if we open boat, And you'll see here now we get um, a, a series of questions that I will go through. Um, I'm not going to show all of these, um, partly for speed, but also because the questions can change year on year, and I don't um, want to give away. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to kind of give away the whole self valuation. We want people to, to to be able to engage with this fresh and to give us um, genuine responses. But you can see it's very easy to either click multiple choice or single choice, and you can always, as as it said before, you can pause and come back at any time. Um, when you when you do that, you also see um, progress in each area, and there's also a handy timer to give you a feeling for, uh, again, based on a rough cadence, how long it might take to complete each, se each section. Okay, welcome back. You can see now that I've completed all of the areas, so that each uh, each area has a, a green tick and 100%. If I wanted to, I can go back and review the answers and change them. But assuming that I'm happy with my answers, I can then submit the evaluation. And yeah, it will confirm that. And you can see here it says, congratulations, you have completed the digital membership self-valuation and your score this year is a number out of 10. Um, the next step is to go and build the action plan. And it, the hub will suggest six solutions uh, based on my response in the self-valuation. And what we need to do is then review those and decide um, whether basically we need to decide which one is, is right for us and, and is realistic and achievable that we could implement it over the next 12 months. So let's pick four. So sunscreen, um, yeah, adding a sign, that's realistic. Yep, renew the dive guide e-course, very good. And finding alternative to masking tape. And it's worth saying that the we'll, we'll, we'll come on to the support that's available for this. Um, at the end. Um, lastly, so you, the manager has signed the code of conduct at the beginning of this process, but as we're now building and committing to the action plan, there is a uh, basically a reminder of the commitment that the manager will, you know, 
not only implement it, but also ensure to the best of their ability that the staff are following Greenfin standards. And you'll now see that the operation has been granted digital membership. So it's at this point now that the operation is considered active. They will be considered uh, or will be published onto the Greenfin's website. And uh, from any point on now, it is possible that the, that the, the operation could be considered for eco recognition, depending on um, a that what happened in the action, uh, excuse me, what happened in the self valuation and, and the action plan, um, but also based on ongoing activity in the community forum and um, logging progress against the plan. And I'll show you now how we do that. So now that we've um, become a digital member, you can see that the membership type has changed and it's uh, that the logo is now the digital blue color and it says that the renewal, you know, the renewal due date. The um, digital membership certificate is now visible and available to download and the QR code um, for verifying the center's membership will now activate. Um, again, it can sometimes take an hour just for all of the systems to catch up with each other. But um, if after an hour, the QR code is still not working, then again, please contact info at greenfins.net and we'll look into it. From this op operation dashboard, you can see that there are still um, a series of to-dos for us to, to do. And these could have been done beforehand. Um, I just neglected to do them before completing the self-evaluation. But there are um, links confirming that we've downloaded the, the Greenfins Code of Conduct poster and the icons poster with links to actually go and get those from the website. In this central column, we have a breakdown of the score gauge, and that explains the, the three core components of digital membership scoring. Um, there's also a member pack and a QR certificate, and these can be used to um, promote the center on social media and on their website. And generally speaking, this, this the QR code is unique to that operation, and we really encourage people to um, to, to put it onto their materials, to uh, use it throughout the center, um, and, and also to share it online. Um, it's a really convenient way for guests to um, feel confident that they are diving with a legitimate operation. And it is quick for them to scan the code from their phone, open the Greenfins website, and very quickly see that the, that the center is a member. It's also nice because that code stays with the center for the lifetime of, of, the, uh, of their membership. And that is also true if they convert. So if you start as a digital member and then a national team becomes available in the country that you're in, your membership can be converted to certified membership, uh, either bronze, silver or gold level once you've had the assessment. And that QR code will continue to function and it will just update to reflect the, the, the changes in your membership. So um, again, not having to print new materials every year, um, you, can, you can print once and know that, it, that it's good for the lifetime of that material. Now, um, as, you, as you can see uh, with the scoring, we've only completed the self-valuation and that is the only ring that is populated at the moment. And you can see here that these other two components are, are on zero. So if, if we are serious about getting um, eco-recognition, then um, we need to um, do a little bit of work on our community and action plan scores. Ah, now, um, <laughs> this is a bug that we are working to fix. It's possible that um, if you do if you do see this, um, sorry, you can't access the hub um, error. Um, um, what you need to do is just log out and log back in again, and then that will be fixed. So I'll just demonstrate that now. So um, when I log in, I'm taken to the home screen and you can see from the, the home screen um, that we have some notifications and um, we have uh, these three columns. Um, the forum post will populate in a moment once we've um, actually accessed the community. But if we go back up um, to here and click on this button, this will open the operation dashboard just for a bit of continuity about where we were um, in the process. So there again, you can see the operation tasks membership certificate, QR code, and a, and a reminder of our score. And like I said, the these scores and your digital membership score updates over time. So simply at the moment, because it's on 1.2, which feels quite low, um, participating in the community and logging progress against the action plan will slowly start to bring this up. 
Um, so don't don't feel discouraged if you do have um, a low first year score. Um, it, it's Greenfin's membership isn't instant, um, or sorry, becoming a member is instant. But but actually, um, reducing environmental impact can take um, you know can take years in some cases. So um, it really is a journey, and we encourage people to continue with that journey, um, even if at the beginning it is a little bit painful. Okay, so now if I click on the action plan, um, we can open it. And you'll see here, we've got those four um, action plan points that we agreed to when building this plan. Just in case um, people forget, there's a little reminder about how it works. But in summary, um, each of the points, if you open it, has um, a solution article from the library and a series of to-dos that need to be completed uh, to, to, to log that progress. So in the first instance, I recommend um, reading the solutions library article. So there's always um, very clear instructions. There's frequently associated materials and links. And um, we really do want feedback. So if for any reason um, you have ideas for improvement or you think that the content uh, is missing something, then um, very conveniently um, you can open a post in the forum from here or just open the forum directly. And there's a, there's a whole category for hub feedback and we would love to hear from you. So going back to the action plan, um, each to do, um, you can then view or log progress and it works just like a dive log. So any, and um, we'll, we'll show you how to add teammates in a second, but the, the idea is that the whole team can get in here as themselves and, and log progress. So you um, start by making an entry. So perhaps, um, and what are we doing here? Informed of the possible for the visit tourism sites. So we can say um, uh, updated the operation policy to um, <laughs> to do something <laughs> and then that is then added to the log for everybody to see and the idea then is if you've even got quite a big center with several environmental champions they can each kind of keep an eye on what they're doing and say then that um, we've taken a series of actions and we feel that this to do is complete. You can then mark it as complete. The hub will ask you to do a final log entry and this is the only log entry that's compulsory. So for every to do, we do want to capture a little snippet of text to understand exactly um, how this was implemented. Um, so um, you can say, um, we, you know, we completed X steps and then like, um, you know, X, Y, Z, and, and put, out, put in the detail. And already we've seen that people are really engaging with this and giving really good detail and that they are finding it helpful to have a record of the activities that they've undertaken to reduce their environmental impact. So useful for, the, for our foundation to see um, people engaging, but also hopefully a, a useful tool for the center itself and for the manager to perhaps delegate some of the environmental activity, but still be able to see exactly what's going on. Okay, so now that um, progress log has been added and it's been marked as complete, you can see here to do mark complete. And you can see now that, that, that it's updated to say that one of these four to do's is complete, so it's gone green, the others are gray. And if we log out, um, you can see again um, that the, there's a nice visual indicator of progress here. Also, if we go back home and open the dashboard, you can see now that the action plan score has started to creep up. So um, again, there's a, a, again, a very direct link between recording progress and making a meaningful impact um, where you work and that then being reflected in the overall uh, scoring. Now we have the solutions library and uh, while everybody will get four um, solutions to begin with, we, we do give access to the full library. So um, at the top, there are the four that you're supposed to be working on for the action plan but but you know say that there's um another area where you've got a challenge or you just want to browse and be inspired about things that you could potentially do um, then the full library of, of articles is here um, you can either click through them or uh, you can use the search feature to find what you're looking for um, again uh, and i should have started with this at the beginning but the hub is a mobile first experience so I, i'm demoing this on my laptop but this works just as well on a mobile phone um, and it's quite a convenient way of um, being able to um, get the information that you're looking for. 
Now, last but by no means least, um, the Hub has a dedicated community forum, which is supposed to be a space where everybody can come together and discuss the environmental challenges that they have found and could do with help from. Um, it's also a space where we have brought in uh, trusted experts from the wider network. And, um, as an, and it's also a place where we can share information with the community but through initial, excuse me, through official announcements. Um, so again, I really encourage people to come in and, and certainly get started by um, introducing themselves. Um, but very quickly, you can see um, that if you're stuck on your action plan or you think you found an issue with a, an article in the library, um, then you can come in here and start a discussion around it and find like-minded people to help either improve it or uh, create a new article. And um, if, if uh, we've actually already had examples of this, but if people help us write articles, then we will give them credit on the article itself um, to sort of, again, recognize the effort that people have put in here. We also have um, some dedicated um, forum categories for each agency. Um, these are actually brand new. We've only added these in the last couple of weeks, so um, they're still um, getting up to speed. But again, it's a, a place where you can have focused conversation around each agency's um, sustainability efforts, and we hope to see more conversations there. And that's it. So um, in summary, um, you sign up first by creating a personal account, then by uh, registering your operation, you pay, you complete the self-evaluation, uh, you build an action plan, you become an active member of Greenfins, and that unlocks the hub to then be able to cr you know, create log entries in the action plan, browse the solutions library, and uh, participate in the community discussion forum. The last thing I want to just very quickly show is just a little bit of housekeeping. So from the home screen, um, you can click a menu here, and um, from here, you can view all of the operations that you've been associated with. So um, if you're a manager of more than one operation, or perhaps you're, say that you're a senior um, person within a fleet of liverboards, perhaps you're the operations director of a fleet of liverboards, you can be added as a teammate onto every single operation that you're responsible for, and they will um, appear in the list below, even if they're managed by another member of your staff. And it means then you, you can see a really nice overview of each center's performance and just sort of benchmark one against the other. And uh, you can mix and match. So if you have a, uh, say that your Liverboard fleet has um, some certified and some digital members, they can all exist in here. And you can see for, based on the scoring, um, whether they're certified or digital, and also um, how well the team are engaging. So if the if the blue ring for the action plan is is empty on one operation, you know that the staff there have a little bit more work to do to to lock their feedback about their progress. And uh, the yellow um, ring is for community activity. So again, you can see whether the staff in that operation um, are are making progress towards their wave goal for the for the year. Um, if you want to add another operation, so say that you are genuinely the manager of two operations um, and you are the, the, the local person on the ground, you can come in here and add another operation. There will be a warning because we we think this is an, an edge case that in most cases um, you, there would be somebody else in the operation that would be the, the right person to be the hub manager. It doesn't have to be the most senior person in that operation. Um, but if you if you click through this, it then takes you back into the same um, sign up process that I demoed at the beginning, starting with choosing the industry. I won't demo that again. Um, now that we've entered the community, you can see that the latest forum posts um, section is populated, including some notifications. And eventually when we get badges, they'll appear here. Um, so again, really nice way to quickly get into the, the discussion and, and um, keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on. And then lastly, um, Sometimes you might want to come in and, and uh, make edits to your operation. So there's a button here that says edit profile and teammates. And assuming that you are the hub manager, then you can come in and change the logo, update the name, the location, uh, move that map pin. Um, you can also, and, and you know potentially say that you forgot to put your store number in, you can put that in here. Um, from here is also how you can manage um, your team. So if you do want to bring in um, other members of staff, and we really encourage this, um, there's a, an invitation box here. Um, this box will only work if they already have a personal account. So if they haven't already, get them to go to the uh, login screen and register a personal account. And when they get to that screen where it says add operation, it's at that point their email address will work in here. And sending an invitation will, will 
trigger an email to them and if they click it it will say do you want to accept the invitation and then they'll appear in here and um, after a refresh then um, there they'll then see the operation that you've set up in this um, all operations screen um, the only other thing I would say is again you can do things like change your password um, edit uh, the details of your personal account get help and support which takes you to the forum um, and finally the hub is available in several languages um, so it's machine translated um, into the languages seen here and we are planning to potentially add new languages and um, and actually do um, human translation at some point in the future and that's it um, hopefully that provides a bit more of a flavor about the hub platform about digital and certified membership on the hub and um, all I would say is we would love to see you in the community forum um, and if for any reason you do get stuck please just send an email to info at greenfins.net and the team will be really happy to help. Thank you, bye-bye.